What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the 585 Report. And we got some breaking news to discuss here, man. Uh, our quarterback got paid. And I mean paid handsomely. And I honestly couldn't be you know, more excited, happier, really. Before I get into it, let me give you, you know, some updates here real quick with the show. So I had it, you know, as many of you know, let me start here. As many of you know, me and Ryan typically record on Thursdays. And even when Ryan's out or I'm out, that's usually still our plan. Record Thursdays. And I guess, luckily for me, I, you know, I couldn't record yesterday. So I had to record this morning. Um, you know, a whole plan for, for this week's episode all written out. This happened, so those plans are out the window. Uh, and thank God that I didn't record yesterday because no one would be listening considering what's going on. With that being said, I know I said that we were going to have a guest on this week. Again, because things can work out as far as finding a time for the two of us, we'll record that next week. So he'll be on next week, the guest I have planned out. Um, so look forward to that for sure. It should be a really good one. But anyways, I guess let's get into it. And for those who are watching on YouTube, uh, you'll probably see me check my phone from time to time. And it's just because, like I said, I'm recording right now. It's 1.30. Okay, so this Josh Allen extension news dropped not even an hour ago. So it's happening in real time as I'm recording. All the details coming out. So I'm trying to, um, you know, kind of keep an eye on Twitter to, to see when things are coming out. You know, I just saw that Diggs apparently. Uh, oh, that's funny. Sean McCoy just tweeted that he, Josh Allen owes him a dinner. I mean, you know, this is this is let's let's just start, I guess, first with Josh Allen and this deal. I think the way Brandon Bean structured this was really quite smart because it doesn't kicking this year or next year. This is added on to the end of his fifth year extension. So effectively, he's in Buffalo now for the next eight years. Eight years, okay. Think about this. All right, I will. I just turned twenty-two. I will be thirty when this contract runs out for Josh Allen. Thirty, okay. So he's locked for a long time. Now, of course, I know there are some people who wanted one more year of Josh, um, seeing how he could play, see if he's worth the money, make sure the last year wasn't a fluke. Uh, we're going to, he better not be now because he's here for eight years and he's getting paid annually around $43 million a year, which places him pretty much second behind Pat Mahomes. Who's getting about 45 million per year. So I think the money it's perfect because, you know, Josh Allen, he's not the best quarterback in the NFL, which is Patrick Mahomes, but his projection is he's going to be right about at that level based off what we saw last year and the fact that people say he can get better. If he gets better, he'll be one of the two or three best quarterbacks in the National Football League, so he's getting paid like it. So I think the money they paid him, I'm I'm totally fine with it. I think it's perfect. I think it's right where it should be, you know? And I am sure, knowing Brandon Bean and knowing how good he is, because I've said this, I think Brandon Bean's best goal as general manager is how he is able to structure his these contracts and deals. He gives them so it's out. He's able to convert it so it doesn't hurt the team. He's really good at managing the cap and giving them flexibility at every level in a contract. And I'm sure that Brandon Bean has done that again with Josh Allen. There is little doubt in my mind that this contract is put it away so Josh Allen gets the money he deserves while also not handcuffing the team and allowing the Bills to make moves when they have to make moves. And Josh Allen said it. He said, I would rather take a little less money to, in order to give the Bills and give this team more ability to sign players and stay competitive. And I'm sure that's how it's done. I'm sure that's how it's written. I would be, you know, surprised if it were in a way that it would hurt the bills. But I, I just think that, you know, this is a job well done. And it's amazing because it seemed like just a few days ago, there was a report that, you know, the bills can come to an agreement 
in the near future, they're just going to kind of table contract discussions and that things have been really quiet between the two sides. So I was thinking that, okay, there's probably no way this deal is getting done before the season. It's probably going to happen maybe next off season, maybe during the season. Although it, it reports that, that was probably not going to happen, that it was going to either be this off season or next off season. And sure enough, they just dropped the bomb out of nowhere today that Josh Allen got his extension. And honestly, I think that this sh- this is a day that Bills fans need to celebrate. Because just think about the, the, the dark days we had at quarterback, right? Your Trent Edwards, J.P. Lossman, your E.J. Manuel that then turned into uh, Kyle Orton midseason, you know? The Tyrod Taylor extension, when we thought that was, you know, going to be our guy, and they paid him, you know, that sixty or hundred million dollar option situation, and all that craziness that we've kind of gone through. To now, not only do we have this MVP front runner quarterback, he's not going anywhere, and there was little doubt in my mind that Josh Allen was going to get signed anywhere else, that he was going to leave Buffalo, but you know, he's here for he's here for for for. Eight years now. I mean, eight years. We're talking 20, 28, 29, I believe. Somewhere around then when this contract would expire. So good luck to the rest of the AFC East and probably the AFC because this guy's not going anywhere now for the next, effectively the next decade. I'll just put it that way. So guys, I mean, this this is huge. And I never thought as a Bills fan, we kind of get to this point of having a quarterback who's amazing and good enough where it's like, we need to give him that big extension and Josh Allen has done it. And, and you got, you have to chip your head off to Josh Allen because as he said, you know, he, he's always been a guy, hum, humility for him. You know, he's very humble, very, um, I'm sorry, I just keep a reset on Twitter because I, I have to just see what's going on. But he's a guy, as we all know, he's very humble. Uh, and he said it just recently, you know, it was not that long ago that I was in junior college. And he's just a great story, too, for, for hard work and motivation, how that pays off. Because, again, this is a guy who went to JUCO, got no, got one D1 offer, effectively. All right, guys, technically two, two D1 offers, right? Went to a small school. You know, got drafted, but had a lot of people who didn't believe in him and had to work on his game and all this stuff. And here he is now going into his fourth year in the NFL. And the man is one of the, what it just got paid. I mean, it's great. It's, this is awesome. I'm really happy. If you can tell, I'm really, really happy about this. And I'm happy that it got done, right? It got taken care of. And I'll get I, I'll get in the timing of this contract because there's two layers of it. There's the layer of it that is the Bills layer, right? In Josh Allen, the timing of when they got this deal done and how this affects the season. And of course, what everyone's thinking about is with Lamar and Baker Mayfield because that's what's key. Now, let me start with the Bills and Josh Allen. Buffalo and Josh Allen getting this deal done, I think, before the season starts is good for them it's great because let's face it for brandon bean this was the number one thing he had to get done there's no free agency there's no draft he's got time till that currently right now in august august 6th right this was the number one thing that had to get done was the josh allen extension this was the top thing on brandon bean's priority and he got it done and for Josh Allen, this is done. And now he doesn't need to focus. He doesn't need to worry about all the, 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 the noise with the contract. When's it going to happen? How much are they going to pay him? Blah, 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 blah. Will they pay him? It's done. And he can just focus on the season, which is what he said he wanted to do really initially, is just focus on the season. And that's going to happen now. So I, I'm, I, I think the timing of this deal for the Bills to get it done before this season, get them locked up so that, for a team that has Super Bowl aspirations and that is driven by their quarterback, the fact that both sides got this done and now can just focus on the 2021 season and trying to go win a Super Bowl for the Buffalo Bills, huge. 
absolutely huge. So I think that is really key when you're kind of talking about this this uh, extension. The fact that they got it done, contract hack, con- contract talks are over, and they can just focus on the 2021 season. So I I'm just I think that's really really great. And now we got to, I mean, we got to talk about now what this means for the other quarterbacks in this draft class and how important it was that they got this deal done ahead of those two, Baker and Lamar. Props to them. Because that was the biggest thing. As everyone was sitting there saying, you know, it's going to come down to which quarterback goes first because the next two are going to get paid more. Let's just be honest. The bar has been set now for what Lamar and Baker Mayfield should get or roughly what they will get because Lamar should get the equal contract that Josh Allen got at the least, maybe more. Lamar is an MVP winner. He's an, I think he's for sure a top 10 quarterback in the national football league. I think a guy that's going to have a monster year this year. Now that they got him some, you know, legitimate receivers. For the Ravens, they got to pay Lamar just about what Josh Allen got, I think. How could they not? How could they not? His resume is probably more impressive than Josh Allen. MVP winner. He's won 80% of the games he started in. 80%. Think about that. 80% win- 800 winning percentage in the National Football League. I understand that wins aren't exactly a quarterback stat, but that's hard to ignore when Lamar Jackson has won the Baltimore Ravens 80% of the games he's played in. Keep in mind that before Lamar when it was Joe Flacco, that was a fringe wildcard team that has now become a consistent double-digit win team under Lamar Jackson. He's won them the division. He's won an MVP. He's taken the playoffs three years in a row. So Lamar Jackson will get paid. How much will he get paid more than Josh Allen? I think we're going to find out. We're going to find out because he's a guy that if the Ravens do pay him more than Josh Allen, I think the Ravens can live with that because we do know that Lamar Jackson's a great quarterback. He's a franchise quarterback. He's going to be the face of that franchise now for the next, again, six to seven, eight years, just like Josh Allen, right? So for the Ravens, obviously, they're going to have to figure out a number that works for them. And of course, I would assume they value Lamar Jackson equally as much as the Bills value, value Josh Allen. I could be wrong. Maybe they think that he's not as good as Josh Allen. I personally think that Lamar Jackson should get paid the same money as Josh. But for the Cleveland Browns, what a tough position for them. What do they do? What do the Cleveland Browns do? Because, let's face it, guys. Bigger Mayfield is not Josh Allen. He's not. He's not Lamar Jackson either. I think Baker's a good quarterback. I think that the Browns need to extend him. But man, is that a tough... This could argue could be a nightmare situation for Cleveland because, you know, like I said, Josh Allen has now set the bar for the 2018 quarterback class as far as what kind of money the extension could look like. He set the bar and he set it up here, right? And you know Lamar is going to get up here as well. Because Josh and Lamar are up here, talent-wise, across the league, quarterback-wise, those two guys are surefire top 10. And on the verge, I think, of putting themselves in the elite category. Josh, a little bit more so than Lamar. But Lamar, listen, if Lamar can prove that he's a better passer than he was in 2020, which, again, I think he will prove, then Lamar Jackson is an elite quarterback along with Josh Allen. They're both knocking on the door. They're coming. They're coming. But Baker Mayfield, Baker Mayfield's a good quarterback. Debatably a top 10 quarterback. I think he's he's either you just have him in or he's right on the fringe of it. But Baker Mayfield's hit a ceiling. Like Lamar and Josh can get better, right? They still have some room to grow. 
those two were the most raw quarterback prospects in that class. So they're still, they still haven't really, for all we know, they both have not hit their, you know, their full potential yet. But Baker Mayfield, what we saw in 2020 is probably what Baker Mayfield is, which I mean, which is good. Like that's a good quarterback and Cleveland should be happy. They have him. They should, because this is a guy that was a rookie of the year. You know, got them the playoffs. They won a playoff game. Has them primed to probably, you know, potentially win the AFC North, contend for a Super Bowl. And again, a large part is because of Baker Mayfield, because they have a franchise guy. But what complicates things is that Baker is, again, not at that caliber of Josh Allen. So I don't know what the Browns are going to do. I don't know if they are going to pay him the same money as Josh Allen. They're in a pickle. And for Baker, the ball, I mean, Baker's party, that that's for them. They, they right now have all the leverage in the world. Because if the Browns don't want to pay Baker, then they're going to go back to square one of being quarterbackless. So you know they're going to have to pay him. But they... It, that could be a situation, and I, and I really don't. I'm not rooting for this to happen. I'm really not because, as a Bills fan, right? Like I, I feel for the city of Cleveland. I kind of feel like Browns fans and Bills fans are sort of kind of in this boat together, right? Blue collar, you know, cities with football teams that they're so passionate about that haven't been good, like don't have quarterbacks, and now all of a sudden. Things are turning and they're becoming kind of back to the glory days of how it was back then. So I'm not rooting for anything bad to happen with Baker or the Browns because I want them to be good. I want them to be competing with the Bills to go to Super Bowls because that's good for the NFL. And again, I feel like we're kind of connected a little bit. I feel sympathy for them. They feel sympathy for us. We root for them. They root for us. I've never rooted against the Browns. How can you? Unless, of course, the Bills are playing them. But, uh, of course. However, with this Baker-Mayfield deal that's lurking, I could easily see this being a situation similar to what just happened with the Los Angeles Rams and Jared Goff. Goff caught them to a Super Bowl. All looked great. Give him all the money in the world. He's the franchise guy. But Jared Goff isn't Dak Prescott. And he doesn't have that kind of ability. And at the end of the day, it was Sean McVay's coaching and that talent on their roster that more so carried them to that Super Bowl rather than Jared Goff. And as we have saw last year, Jared Goff got exposed the last two seasons. Got exposed. Came out that Sean McVay is telling him everything to do in his ear and that you know he's snapping the ball before the... Connection between the coaches and the quarterback cuts out. Telling them they're in this coverage. Look this way. So now we know that Jared Goff obviously is not a franchise quarterback. He's a starting quarterback. He's not a franchise guy who's worth the money they paid. And of course, now we know that Jared Goff deal is probably one of the worst deals recently in the NFL. NFL history. They paid him tremendously and traded him three years later. So I'm not hoping that that happens to Baker and the Browns. I don't want it to, but you can see where I'm kind of going here, that this is a a real potential area where the Browns overpay Baker quite a bit for what he is. I hope that both sides come to an agreement for them. That isn't too crazy, but we'll see. But Josh Allen has set the bar for Baker and Lamar. So, Great for the Bills and Josh Allen to get this done. And mainly for the Bills. Get this done before Baker, before Lamar. Because they're now going to just watch the next quarterbacks just get paid more and more and more. And they've now given themselves all that flexibility they need to continue to extend other players, sign players, stay competitive, continue to fight for a Super Bowl ring. You know, And that's tremendous. That's huge. Absolutely huge. So this is this is this is this is big time for the Buffalo Bills. Big time. And 
you know, we're this again, this is just this is great for the Buffalo Bills. They have their guy, he's locked up. The team, I assume, still will have a decent amount of flexibility to make moves that they need to. The price, the the yearly average, is perfect. It's smack between Mahomes and Dak, which is where I think Josh Allen's money should be. Not as high as Lamar, but he's a better, better, or not, excuse me, than um, Mahomes. But certainly he's, he's, I think, a step above Dak Prescott, which what his contract suggests. And... I mean, I mean, it's it's this is huge. I mean, it's done. It's 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 in the books and done. And it's also interesting too because when you look at Brandon Bean, how he operates, we almost, in a way, I don't want to say should have seen this coming, but I'm sort of thinking back to when Trey White got paid, when Deion Dawkins got paid. Right. For these guys that are clearly going to be cornerstones, right? Of this franchise, right? Your left tackle, your shutdown corner, now your quarterback, right? Brandon Bean has extended these guys early, right? Like last offseason, Trey White was the one guy everyone knew was going to get his extension, which he he got it around this time last year. Deion Dawkins was a guy that everyone was thinking, hey, maybe, you know. Maybe he needs another year just to prove that this is what he is. Well, they paid him, and then he, again, proved that he is the left tackle that he is, right? So, so there are some people, including my my co-host Ryan, who is thinking, hey, let's wait for Josh Allen. Give him a year. Let's see if he's really worth this big money that we're hearing. And for Josh Allen, and for the Bills, and for Brandon Bean, Brandon Bean said, you know, screw that. I'm, I'm getting this done now. And so far, it's worked out for the Bills. They paid Trey White. Again, they paid Trey early. And keep in mind this, too. Going back to that Trey White deal, you know, Marshawn Lattimore and Marlon Humphrey, and these were all guys. There were all these corners, right, that were about to get paid. Young, awesome, shutdown, elite corners. Trey White got paid first before they did. And then that number got just upped and upped and upped and up. And, yep, and, and, uh, as I'm saying this, I was just looking at Twitter, and a lot of people are starting to, to think about this. You know, like, yeah, Trey Way got paid before a couple big names were about to get paid at the quarterback position that same offseason. So, Brandon Bean had, he, he he's clearly, right, clearly um, aware that it's better to get it done now then wait till later and still and pay more. Especially when you look at a position like quarterback. Like if you think you got your guy, pay him, lock him up, and 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 let's go. And that's what Brandon Bean did. But he did, but he did the same thing though with Trey White, where he paid him before Lattimore and Humphrey got paid. And it saved the Bills a good amount of money. And they did the same here with Josh Allen. So Got to give Brandon Bean credit for that. And I think this is something now to expect. So, for example, let's just say a few years from now, I'm trying to think of like a guy who might get paid soon, right? Like, I'll say like Rousseau, right? Gregory Rousseau. We're a lot of some, some you know, edge defenders, people pretty excited about some good pass rushers in this past draft class. If he's a guy that's proved that he, he needs to get extended, get paid, along with some other dudes, right? I would be surprised if Brandon Bean goes ahead and, and, and gets that extension done early. This might be what Brandon Bean just does moving forward, which I'm for it. I'm for it. And I know, again, some people are nervous and they like to wait and make sure they have what they have. But people, I think, and again, I, and I, I do this sometimes with the Bills, sort of kind of zoom out, right? Think about what things were before McBean, you know, when Bean and McDermott took things over, right? And you know, we would kill, and, 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 you know, when the Bills would, they would never pay the money for their guys. And, I mean, it was just night, good player after good player, right, going elsewhere to get paid because the Bills wouldn't pay up all the time. I mean, you could just go down the list. Antoine Winfield, Nate Clemens, 
Jarius Bird. I mean, it's just dude after dude after dude. Stephon Gilmore, like Robert Woods, just never paying their own guys, even if they had talent. And those guys were good players. So I, I personally like that they're being aggressive, that they're making sure we got a good player on our football team that's a leader, that fits in what we want, that's great in the locker room, that's everything that embodies what being a Buffalo Bill is about. Why wait? Why wait? Sign them now, get them paid, especially before they get priced out, and let's keep them in Buffalo. And that's what Brandon Bean's been doing. He's been doing it since he got here. And he's proven now with these big contract extensions for these young players that they have drafted and developed over the years that they're getting them done while they're ahead, while they're young, while it's cheaper than it could be. Why wait when you can re-sign your own guys? So I I I'm really happy that this got done. I really am, guys. And <laughs> I feel like I'm you know there's like much else to say really. I mean just this the Bills the Bills are, are aren't going anywhere. I'll just put it that way, right? Cuz Josh Allen's not going anywhere. Josh Allen's going to be here for the next 8 seasons. 8 and as long as he's this MVP caliber quarterback, which we all believe he is, the Buffalo Bills are going to be Super Bowl contenders for the next eight years. Flat out. They, their window, you will talk about the Super Bowl window. And when it closes, when it shuts, me and Ryan did a whole episode about this, right? We both said, as long as Josh Allen is good, as long as he's the guy that we think he is, right? This top, potentially top five elite quarterback in the National Football League. As long as Josh Allen is that guy, the Super Bowl window is Josh Allen. Doesn't matter, you know, if, you know, one guy has to go and, oh, you know, we have to go cheap now at safeties or we can't invest the money we usually do in the running backs. As long as Josh Allen is the guy, the Buffalo Bills have their Super Bowl window open. It's just like the Packers, right? Their Super Bowl window has been open for 10 to 15 years because of Aaron Rodgers. Despite the fact that they haven't gotten him receivers, they haven't invested in weapons for him so much, right? Their defense has been up and down over the years. But they've had Aaron Rodgers and have kept a couple key core guys around them, like David Bakhtiari, left tackle, right? Guys like that. Kept them around. Clay Matthews was around for a while, right? Those few cock pieces you need. But they had Aaron Rodgers, and it hasn't mattered. They have been consistent winners of that division, playoff appearances. The years they don't make the playoffs because Aaron Rodgers got hurt. It's not because Aaron Rodgers played 16 games and wasn't good enough. And that's what, ideally, you want Josh Allen to be. I mean, again, Pittsburgh Steelers, right? Big Ben. That Super Bowl window has been open until this past season. But it was open... For like a decade and a half because Big Ben was their quarterback. So as long as the Bills have Josh Allen, and Josh Allen is the quarterback that we believe he is, top five elite, this Super Bowl window is open. So in my opinion, this Super Bowl window is open for the next eight years. Regardless of what happens to Singletary and Moss, will they get paid? Oh, what about... Uh, you know, Gabe Davis. Oh, uh, Cole Beasley might retire soon. He's getting older. Emmanuel Sanders. One, it doesn't matter because Josh Allen is the quarterback. So, I think that this is tremendous, huge, and not to mention for people worried about this number because it's a big number. I mean, the salary cap's going up pretty soon. I mean, there's people who are thinking, you know, the salary cap could go up to, to 15 to 20, especially when this new TV deal kicks in in 2022. So I wouldn't be worried so much about how this is going to hand. You know, it's like I said, the salary cap's going to go up. Brandon Me, as you know, probably structure this deal in a way 
that works and makes sense. So, I mean, that's kind of all I have to say. I, I feel like I'm a, kind of rambling a little bit here. I mean, I literally came out with no notes. I mean, I had notes for a completely different topic. I legitimately just threw them away. I was like, screw that. I, I just been, you know, I got, I got to talk about um, Josh Allen, this extension. I have to. How can I not? I'd be giving you a disservice if I wasn't talking about this extension. So there you have it, folks. Josh Allen. Got paid. And he ain't leaving any time soon. So enjoy your Friday, or I guess you'll be listening to this on a Saturday, so you'll still be riding the high of Josh Allen in this extension because this comes out Saturdays at noon, as I'm sure you all know. And this extension didn't even happen 24 hours ago. So, Bills fans, all the nonsense that happened over Twitter and the stadium and the vaccines and all this stuff that was just constant, you know, beef and turmoil and just enjoy yourselves. Relax, fix yourself a drink if you drink and enjoy it because our quarterback got paid. He's not going anywhere. And the Super Bowl window is open for eight years. How awesome is that? All right. So thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the 585 Report. Really appreciate it. Uh, As I said, next week, things will be a little bit more structured and won't be as crazy last minute, all this craziness. Uh, We're going to have a guest on, or I'll have a guest on rather, as Ryan is still on vacation, but he will be back not for next episode, but the episode after that, Ryan will be back here. back home so we'll be together again it's been a as i said it's been it's been a been a wild summer for me and him both doing all sorts of cool things that take our time and all that and all what and whatnot but um but he'll be back in two weeks but again next week have a guest on really excited should be a lot of fun so thank you for listening to this week's 585 report episode don't forget to follow the 585 Report on Twitter at 585 Report. Follow me on Twitter at Mitchell underscore Broder, all lowercase. And follow Ryan at Sports Rock 2 on Twitter as well. And continue to check out all the great work across all BF platforms, whether that's the blog, which has been pumping out some really awesome content. Can't really vouch for them enough. They're great. Read the articles with the blog team. They're working really hard, especially now as they got a lot to write about now. Of course, all the podcasters, everything on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Check it all out. It's all great work. Uh, And yeah, thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day and go Bills.